And a good day to you. It's Russ Barkley back again with this Saturday's Research Review for Saturday, August 31st. Hope you had a great August. I know I certainly did. Uh, as always, let's get started with a couple of dad jokes to warm things up, and then we'll get into the four articles that I found this week that I thought were particularly worth commenting on. So your dad jokes come from the website prevention.com this week, and here they are. I used to have a fear of speed bumps, but I'm slowly getting over it. I just knew you'd like that one. So I had to get a neck brace last year and I haven't looked back since. Yeah, I probably should for that one. You bet. So finally, here's another one for you. So I don't want to be friends with Dracula anymore. He's such a pain in the neck. That's probably better for your children than for others. But okay, uh, enough of these really silly dad jokes. Let's get into the research for this weekend. And we have, first up, an article on positive emotion regulation difficulties and social impairments in adolescents with and without ADHD. This study comes to us from Massachusetts, and it is a study using a good size sample of teens with ADHD and looking not only at the level of their ADHD symptoms, but especially at their capacity to regulate their positive and negative emotions. This article, as you can see here, was published over in the journal Research on Child and Adolescent Psychopathology. Now, we've known for a while that ADHD has an inherent problem with emotional self-control. And this is especially problematic for the negative emotions, although my theory of executive functioning and ADHD has argued that it would apply to all emotional expression, but the emotions most likely to be costly to an individual, particularly in social situations, are the negative emotions, anger, impatience, hostility, aggression, and so on. This study looked at whether or not difficulties regulating positive emotions might also contribute to peer relationship problems or not. And that is exactly what they found. Even controlling for the effect of negative emotions on the social impairments related to ADHD, and there were such relationships, they found that impulsiveness coupled with positive emotional expression did predict problematic social interactions. So it isn't just the expression of negative emotions, but the inability to regulate positive emotions can also have detrimental effects on the peer relationships of teens with ADHD. So very interesting study there that helps to confirm not only uh, my theory of ADHD and emotion regulation, but goes further to actually give us the evidence now on positive emotions being problematic for ADHD teens. Okay, next up is a study that looked at the genetic relationships between ADHD and other disorders such as major depression and schizophrenia and antisocial behavior or criminal behavior. And what it found is that several of these disorders had a causal relationship with antisocial behavior, ADHD being chief among them, and that these causal relationships were in part mediated by shared genetics. One interesting gene that they identified is the FOXP2 gene. Now, I find that interesting because that gene is also related to language development in humans. And we know that individuals who engage in antisocial behavior get less education, often have somewhat lower levels of intelligence. And this gene may help to us to understand those relationships since people with language problems may have difficulties in school, may not score as well on intelligence tests, particularly on the verbal portions. And all of that may then result in them drifting over to antisocial behavior, coupled, of course, with the impulsiveness of ADHD. So sort of a fascinating study there 
on the relationship of these disorders to antisocial behavior and the possible role of shared genetics between the disorders, especially ADHD, and risk for antisocial behavior. So that article came to us out of China, and it was an article published over in the Journal of Affective Disorders. All right, next up is an article that comes to us out of Canada. This one was published in the Journal of Exercise, Movement, and Sports. Uh, I'm actually reviewing it over on the SCAPES website, but you can get it over at the journal as well. This is an article that looked at whether or not having ADHD is linked to athletic performance, particularly the level of athletic development in athletes. Done in Canada, it looked at 138 students attending Canadian universities. It looked at their degree of ADHD. It looked at their degree of athletic competence and participation. And what it found is that among high-level elite athletes in this study, ADHD was four times more likely to occur than it would in the base rate of the general population. Now, that's interesting because we've already had other studies that showed that people with ADHD, when they got into college, were more likely to major in physical education and were more likely to participate in sports. Well, this study also shows the reverse, that if we sample athletes in college, we find that especially high-level athletes are much more likely to have ADHD compared to low-level athletes or individuals who don't engage with much in athletic activity. Now, the authors go on to suggest that it's possible that ADHD has some positive benefit among high-level athletes. That's true, but remember, the study is purely correlational, and we really can't make a causal interpretation the way they have. So, it's just as possible that people with ADHD are much more likely to gravitate toward athletics and even move on up to high-level athletics, finding it beneficial for the management of their ADHD, but also finding that it's a great niche to be ADHD, that one doesn't pay as much of a price for having ADHD symptoms in athletic competitions or athletic majors or performance than it would if they had ADHD and they were in some other sport, excuse me, not sport, but some other course or major in college. So we have to be careful there about causal interpretations here. But a fascinating study showing an overrepresentation of ADHD in high level athletes in Canadian university. Okay, my last study that I want to talk about comes from the Journal of the Formosan Medical Association. It comes to us out of Taiwan. Uh, and this is a study on the links between ADHD and problem drinking, that is alcohol abuse, in the college population. Now, this happens to be studying college students in Taiwan, but I can tell you that this finding of a link between ADHD and alcohol abuse has been found in U.S. universities as well. So whether we start with ADHD and look at alcohol use, which is higher in ADHD college students, or whether we look at people who have problematic drinking at the university level, we find that ADHD is overrepresented. So it's kind of a two-way relationship there. Now, this study was, I think, interesting because it was also looking at what role childhood trauma, PTSD, and depression might have made on this link between ADHD and alcohol abuse. So let's, let's break this down. We've got this relationship the higher ADHD symptoms are, the greater the likelihood of alcohol abuse at the university level. All right, now what's mediating that? This study suggests that ADHD symptoms, particularly impulsivity, may well have predisposed individuals to be exposed to more traumatic events in childhood. We know that that's true. And that those traumatic events would have been more likely to have resulted in PTSD. 
and the PTSD would then be linked up with depression and problematic drinking in those with ADHD. So it's a very interesting pathway here from ADHD to alcohol abuse, suggesting that it could be exacerbated, that is the alcohol abuse, be exacerbated by the comorbidity of ADHD with PTSD and depression, and that PTSD did appear to be linked to experiences with childhood traumatic events. So uh, quite a nice paper there as well. All right, I hope you found these papers interesting. I certainly did. Uh, and I hope you continue to enjoy this channel. Uh, and if you do, and you're not a subscriber, please think about signing up as a subscriber. Uh, and as always, I suggest that if you know anybody that might benefit from this science-based content of this channel, please refer them over to this channel. And as always, my friends, have a good weekend and take care, live well, and be well.